Hello and welcome from Learn Channel Studio. My name is Philip and I will be your host for this broadcast. Today we have the pleasure to welcome on our show Amar Al Shamsi, with whom we will discuss about a delicate HR topic, which is how to keep in touch with rejected candidates. Amar Al Shamsi is a talent management leader who holds a bachelor's degree in marketing from the American University of Sharjah and a Master of Business Administration in Human Resources from the Canadian University in Dubai. He is a trusted specialist with a people-centric approach with over 10 years of progressive experience in human resources. Amar, hello and welcome to the show. Welcome, Philip. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure to be with you today. We would like to start by informing our viewers why is it important for the HR department to stay in touch with rejected candidates? Yeah, that's a very good question, actually. Uh, if a candidate is rejected, it doesn't mean that they are not suitable for the company. No. The reason may be the discrepancy of only part of the criteria, like they are not meeting the full criteria. So it is very important to keep in touch with the rejected candidates. This will allow the HR department to get the top candidates in the future when their skills get better. Can you share a few ways on how to be in contact with those candidates? Of course, one of the primary ways um, is to keep the candidates' profiles, like their phone numbers, their emails. So when an open position appears, uh, it will be possible to contact these candidates and check their readiness to reapply for the company. One of the ways also can be like sending out articles, events on the social networks or by emails. Uh, this will always keep the rejected candidates, um, like they, they will be always be um, up to date uh, about the opportunities in our org organization and uh, about our events in general. Today's candidate you turn down, maybe tomorrow's candidate, or maybe tomorrow's client, or some other connection, said Jay Meshke, president of CBIZ Talent and Compensation Solutions. What's your take on this? Well, um, this statement is definitely true. Since the rejected candidates represent a particular value of the company, so it is necessary to maintain positive feedback as candidate reviews affect the organization image. Accordingly, it's very important to pay attention to the needs and requirements of all applicants. Delivering bad news can be a daunting task, said Diane Nicholas, a consultant at WK Advisors. We have to agree this is true. But is this one of the reasons why HR avoids staying in touch with the candidates that were rejected? Well, candidates uh, judge whether the organization in front of them is decent by stories on the internet, reviews of the people they know, and maybe by the attitude of the recruiter himself or herself. I can agree with this statement, but it should be understood that the company's reputation depends on the competent feedback. This is reflected in the fact that the applicants are less like they, they are less likely to consider a position in the organization if they know that uh, there is a negative part about this organization. So accordingly, the company itself will lose the opportunity to attract excellent and experienced people. How do you maintain good relationships with the candidates? The short answer for this question is by providing feedback. Providing feedback is very important. HRs focus only on the benefits for the company, on how it relates to the co corporate culture and their values, forgetting about one of the most important things, which is the interest and benefits of the applicant. Therefore, it's important for me as a recruiter to identify the reasons clearly for the candidate's refusal or to help them pay attention to their possible shortcomings. Such an attitude uh, attitudes allow me as a uh, recruiter to gain the trust of the applicants since it is crucial for them to be aware of the interest of the company's part. In addition, one of the most important things as well uh, is that I try to adhere to the timeliness, the time. The time is very important as well. So delaying the feedback uh, might cause some of the uh, challenges uh, which, which, which might affect the reaction and the attitude of the applicant as well. Thanks for the answer, Omar. And how is maintaining a positive brand image essential for attracting top candidates? Top candidates. Top candidates pay much more attention to various aspects and details of the company's functioning. They read reviews about the organization. 
Therefore, the recruiting stage um, considers this type of applicants in more detail. Top candidates are aware of their values, so the company's image in all its manifestation must be maintained at a positive uh, and good level. This allows HR to attract the experienced employees to the interviews who are interested in an organization that pays attention to the brand. Is outlining exactly what you want in a potential employee in order to sort through applications? Uh, yes, this approach genuinely allows HR to reduce the number of suitable candidates. Many applicants uh, often apply in advance without meeting the specified requirements. However, you should correspondingly pay attention to the additional detail that can be found uh, about the candidates only through conversations, like personal conversation. In addition, using such an approach, there is a risk that it will be possible to miss a top candidate who is not suitable for the specified position, but he or she might be helpful for the company in another position. And Amar, we would like to wrap up with this question. How do you make sure that the rejected candidate will have the will to reapply for a position within your organization? That's a very interesting question as well. A rejected candidate can often be uncertain or they may not understand what is required of them. So it's very important from us as recruiters to provide competent and positive feedback to those rejected candidates. In this case, the HR department should indicate why the candidate is not suitable for the position. Having indicated this, it should be explained that when solving these problems and shortcomings and the candidates can improve themselves, the company will again be very glad to see the candidate again in an interview. Amar, thank you for joining us today and for sharing your thoughts with our viewers. Thanks to you, Philip. A big thanks to our viewers as well for tuning in. If you want to watch this episode or browse more topics, you can always visit our YouTube and Vimeo channels and watch our recorded sessions. Until next time, stay tuned.